Today I'm going to speak about grace. Grace. Now, many of you are familiar with this word when it comes to salvation. We've heard about grace and sometimes the proponents of it, you know, they're just so excited. But the opponents of it will call it, you know, yeah, you know, cheap grace. And, 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 and I don't know about cheap grace because I'm not even sure about expensive grace. I just know about grace. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'm not into uh, doctrinal fights uh, this morning. I'm into experience. I'm into experiencing God for myself, for, as a church, uh, 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 the, the, the reality of the Holy Spirit. Uh, we don't want to fight about doctrines. We want to uh, really know who this God is that we serve. We want to, we want to love Him and, and, and experience His love in greater measures uh, and be His love to the people that are yet to know His love. So, um, let me therefore give you a background of where I'm going. God's grace. Um, I... Uh, Recently, and when I say recently, it was probably about four or five weeks ago, I uh, met up with a pastor from New Zealand. And this pastor was uh, going to minister to one of our services and, and uh, just, you know, saying the normal stuff like, you know, God is good, how are you, a house family, and, you know, the weather is good, the weather is hot, the weather is cold. Uh, uh, and, and then, as we were digging into our lunch, the pastor had a very simple question for me. Now, um, obviously, and I'll give you the question soon, it's a very simple, simple question, but obviously this pastor have been, uh, has been following me on Facebook because, uh, you know, I, I, I share a lot on Facebook. Uh, whatever God is doing, I share. Uh, I tell you about what God is doing in uh, London, in Melbourne, in Botswana, Singapore, Philippines, Jakarta. Uh, uh, no, of course, now we've got ex, uh, Cheras uh, in a form of a homes group. And then we've got ex Miri. Uh, we've already uh, rented a house and we're going to start a cell group, a homes group. Uh, and so uh, he asked this question. Very simple question. Here we go. Pastor, how do you do it? And I think he knew that we had planted X London and X Melbourne both in a span of just four weeks. Now, some of you have never heard that done before. I, for one, have never heard that done before before I carried out obeying God to do it. Two countries within one month. Okay? It's crazy. But you know, having said that, I, I can't say that nobody's doing it. Huh? I'm sure I've, I've learned. Huh? I've learned that we can't say that. Somewhere in the world, God is moving somebody to do crazy things as well. God is having radical uh, 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 servants of His uh, uh, obeying His voice. And so, I won't stand here to be proud and to say, you know, only we. No, no. We, we are just privileged uh, to be hearing the voice of God and obeying and seeing the fruit of it. How do you do it, Pastor? He asked me. And here, here now the answer. The answer came forth from my mouth without rehearsal. And when it came out of my mouth, including the other things that came out after it, I thought this must have been God. Have you ever answered something that you haven't rehearsed? And then when it comes out of your mouth, you go, wow. That's good preaching, man. You know. And I knew it was the Holy Spirit. This is my first answer to him. Again, the question, Pastor, how do you do it? I said, brother, it is by the grace of God. And for a while there, because I'm speaking to a pastor, I thought it was one of the most the question, or answer rather. It's like, yeah, of course I know that. You know, I mean, he didn't come all the way from New Zealand to Malaysia to ask this question and get one answer, it is the grace of God. And so I found myself having to even find the revelation of that word. As I said, it is by the grace of God and looked into his face and goes, <laughs> like, you know, and, and then I went like this. You know my, what I mean, right? Actually, I wasn't really sure. <laughs> you know, because you know the answer, every, everyone here knows how to use that answer. And, and, and then the Holy Spirit began, you know what I mean, right? I mean, when I started in London, the grace of God is in the form of a young man called Lazarus Takawira. 
Then I understood what I was saying. <laughs> that the grace of God is not just a word. It's in forms. In form of a man, in a form of a woman, in a form of finances, in a form of good health, in a form of talent, ability, positioning, connection, context. Where you were born, where you're going, uh, uh, finances to buy the air ticket to get to London. Grace. Because without that, you and I couldn't do it. So how did I know that ex London was of God's will? Because of one man. And with that one man who dared believe, the grace of God followed suit by adding more, two more rather, and then became three more. Do you know before Lazarus even answered the call to go to London, he heard that Pastor Kenneth had a desire or at least a word from God that ex-London will one day be planted. And when I use one day, I really meant one day, you know? Because I didn't know that when that one day will be. Lazarus one day came up to me and said, Pastor, my mom called me and said, Lazarus, I want you to go to London to finish your last six months of your course. He said, Mom, I don't want to, I don't have to, I can finish it here, six months. But God interrupted. God came into the picture. God had a will to be done and Every time God has a will, He has a way. And so, Lazarus said, Pastor, if I'm the one, I'm willing. A real son of the house. I'm willing. I'll be a Zimbabwean sent from Malaysia to London with a Japanese name. So he went. And lo and behold, I didn't know who else was going, but two other brothers were on their way to London. Did you know that? Well, it's called God's grace. So the three of them became a team. And how many of you know, as long as we have three, uh, we can plant a church. Because this church, 13 years ago, was planted with three people. God's grace. And then the three became four because the fourth one was a member of Acts Singapore who was there and I forgot he was there. Not forgot he was there as in like, you know, uh, uh, to, when you about to plant a church, and and, and and I'm thinking, oh, you know who else? Uh, you know we can, and and well, he he was there, he appeared, and not only did he appear, he appeared in the form of one who can play guitar. And did he ever play guitar in a sense for the church services uh, in Singapore? Never. Lazarus will be preaching his first message next Sunday. Has he ever preached a message on this stage? Never. But God's grace is sufficient. I'm telling you, don't deny it. Don't downgrade it. Don't push it aside. Don't say it's nothing. Don't say it's too small. Because God's grace is sufficient. Whoa, I'm telling you. So four became five. Because Judy is there. And then Judy brings her boyfriend. Wow, it's become six. Hallelujah. And 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 her boyfriend likes us. Not always to get a boyfriend or girlfriend that likes you. But then not only that, we like him as well. Like. And then six became seven, seven became nine. And then nine went, you know, like that for a few weeks. Nine went, you know, just, it it stayed at nine. But the grace of God was upon us because once upon a time, there was none. Now there's nine. Take away the O, put one, put I. None became nine. And then, the Sunday that I left London, which was just last week, 24. Not only that, four Indonesians joined us. So we have Malaysians, Singaporean, and Indonesian. Indonesians. Four. And the Indonesians that came immediately wanted to serve the next week. Then the Sunday after that, you know, a few more wanted to serve. One took up his camera and started taking photos. Uh, you know, so it was an immediate uh, exposure dream team. Once there was none. And then there is now 24. Well, today, X London will go on in the next eight hours. 
Uh, and uh, we don't know how many more God will bring, but I'm telling you right now, I'm telling you something of which um, man at age 60 told me once, maybe about seven years ago. He's been in ministry for many years. He's been faithful. He's well respected. He gave me an advice. He gave me a word in the form of a sentence that was really quite powerful. Because he himself was going through transition. And the older you get, the more you don't want to just do everything. You want to do things with heart, with passion. You want to do it well. You want to do it for the glory of God. The older you get, you want to concentrate on that which works, on that which you are called to do. And so he said this to me. He says, Kenneth, I have learned to find God's grace and work in it. If you want to prosper, find where God's grace is and work in it. Now I'm telling you right now, I do not have the grace to sing. So although I was finding it the first few months of this church being started, and I had to do it and I did it by faith, I, I, don't, I don't have it. My wife has it. I don't have the gift or the grace to play instruments. Now, I could do it. I could try, but that's not my grace. You with me? Yeah. Until today, I still play the guitar with three chords. Until today. 13 years ago, that's how I started. Yeah. I was the first worship leader and musician for X Church. You understand or not? Don't play a fool. <laughs> so, I'm not just talking about grace for salvation today. I'm talking about grace... And strength. 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 2 Timothy 2 verse 1. You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Come on, everybody, listen up. You, be strong in what? In the grace. If you're going to be strong in anything, be strong in the grace. Ephesians 4, 7. But to each one, but to each one of us, grace was give, given according to the measure of Christ's gift. Turn to your neighbor and say, he's talking about you. Each one, you are one. And to each one, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. And then if it's given according and is given to you, then be strong in that grace. You will realize that, uh, as you read the scripture, many of the scripture reference that has grace also has the word strength or strong in it. Including, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect. It is not just salvation. It is strength. Amen! They tell me when I, when I travel, Pastor, how come you can connect with young people so well? Grace. God's grace. Sometimes even effortless almost. Because God gives you the heart for young people. And then He gives you the grace. Other people try to do the same. They can't. But I try to do what they are doing well. I can't. We don't fight or compete. We do what we are called to do. We honor the Lord. We give Him glory. Amen? How? What else? I said, I said, the church. He says, yeah, but pastor, when you're away, what happens to the church? I said, the church is strong. The church has come to a place where it's stronger than it's ever been. The leaders are with me. You know, what we have here is a grace. The grace upon a leadership that supports me and the vision that God has given to me. Uh, 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 move on. A church that although it's filled with young people, can actually raise up hundreds of thousands. Where is it coming from? Allowances. Extra jobs. Yeah, bonuses. Pay. Whatever it is, you know, uh, uh, just extra blessing from the Lord. But it's being sown into getting the work of God done. Touching lives, saving lives. Strengthening churches. Blessing nations. Church support. If I didn't have the money, I couldn't go, right? So when you look at that funding, although it's just enough, it's enough. Amen. Because why? My grace is enough. Yeah. The grace is not, never about extra. Yeah. All you need is enough. Yeah. You woke up this morning, 
You thought, ah, another Sunday of church because you're serving. You have to come here 6.30 in the morning, I don't know, 7 o'clock in the morning. You have to carry instruments, right? And you go like, God, I don't know whether I can do this forever. You don't need to do this forever. At least not have that thought. Because all you need to have, at least as a thought, is God, I just need to get through today. And when you actually got yourself off the bed, washed your face, hopefully you did that. <laughs> Brushed your teeth, I doubly hope you did that. And then got into your Sunday best, and as you walked out to your car or motorbike or bicycle, and you got nearer to the church, something happened, right? And then you got into the service and then you begin to shake a few hands and go like, hmm, yeah, I can do this. And then the music started, whatever you started with. And then you say, yeah, I can do this. And then you tap your feet. And then the musicians go like, yeah, yeah, this is what I was made for, yeah. But if you think about it, just two hours before that, you were on your bed. Head on the pillow. Uh, yeah. Here we go again. Yeah. But because you were called to that, you have a grace of God upon you, it, it begins to come alive. And now you are thankful you're here. Not because of me, not because of anybody else, but hey, this is where you belong. On a Sunday, in the presence of God. <laughs> Listening to His Word. The grace, there's grace. And so you don't have to say, can I do this next week? No, just do this this week. Because it's sufficient for this week. How about tomorrow, Pastor? Tomorrow, I'll let you know. I'll let you know. What do I mean by that? Faith and grace always goes together. See, I told you grace and strength goes together. Grace is strength. Strength of God is your grace. But now let me tell you something else before I round this up. Faith and grace must go hand in hand. The scripture says in Ephesians 2.8, For by grace you have been saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. When I was sitting with the pastor, I felt important to answer his question, not to go too foundational, not to go into things that, you know, the pastor would go like, Pastor, I know these things, okay? But I need to tell you where it starts. It doesn't start with the grace, it starts by faith. And faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God. Listen very carefully. The first step is always the step of obedience to a Word that comes from God. The Great Commission is a Word from God. Go ye ye into all the world. Sometimes some of you don't read the word ye anymore in your Bible, so, but you know, go into all the world. Go ye into all the world and preach the good news. Go and make disciples of all nations. So is London wrong? Is Melbourne wrong? Singapore, Philippines, and all the churches that we are planting, and then Japan one day, Chiang Mai another day, India another day. Listen, this is God's word. Generally, to every believer, we must be involved in the end time harvest. But as a church specifically, we want to hear from God. Where next, God? Where next, God? Where next? Where next? So God says London, God says Melbourne. And then, when you step out in faith, you need the grace. Because listen very carefully to this next sentence. Without faith, you do not need grace. Grace begins to operate when a man or woman of God hears the word of the Lord and comes out of his or her comfort zone. Let me tell you this. If for the last one week you have not found yourself living by faith or living outside your comfort zone or living, you know, uh, 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 well, well, basically you've lived just by sight. Whatever you see, you can do, you can do, you can see, you, you, you're living in that world. 
Do you know all you need is your own strength? But as soon as you step out of the, of the world of I can do it myself, and you step into the world of God, without you, I can't do this. Without you, I can't do this. You step into a realm of faith. And in that realm of faith, it is then and then only that you need that grace. Now, I know you can argue about that. You say, oh, no, no, uh, Pastor Kenneth, every day we breathe is by the grace of God. Correct. Understand that. But let's, let, I'm not talking about those general things. I'm talking about specific things. Because your non-Christian friends can live on, no? From Monday to Sunday. Play golf, do whatever they, do, they, they need to do, all in their own strength. They don't even need to wake up and thank God. Thank you, Lord, for breath. Thank you, Lord, for life. They don't, don't even need to thank God. They still are alive. But we who are Christians... We who get into the Word of God and know God, we know there is a different realm. We come into His presence with thanksgiving. Yes, we thank Him for His grace. Even to breathe is by His grace. But listen, if you lived your life without faith and only by sight, you don't need that grace. Grace comes when people... And that's why it says even of salvation. Salvation is not the grace is there, you know, first before faith because it's a person that accepts Christ by faith that he receives the grace. Are you still with me? Yeah, yeah, f- yeah, f- yeah for sure. The grace is everywhere. Just like God is everywhere. La. So that's why sometimes, sometimes people say, oh, God's presence is here. I can feel it. Then someone else says, oh, God's, God's presence is everywhere. What? In the marketplace, in the disco, in the, you know, I mean, but you know, you need, you know, you need to know there is a manifest presence of God. There is a Shekinah glory of God. There is a presence that not only you can feel, but you, 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 you get healed by that presence. You know, in, in the presence of God, there is liberty. You get liberated in that presence. You know, and, and your friends might say, oh, the presence of God also is in this covert. But does he feel it? Does his life get changed by it? No, no. So let's, let's, let's talk uh, in these terms now. The grace of God, yes, it's there every day. Just by breathing, it's the grace of God. But listen, as we are living, and if we continue to live just by sight and, and doing only things that we can do by our own strength, you do not need that grace. God's grace is always there, yes, for, for sure. But you know, that means, that means all your friends are already saved. No, they're, they're only saved when they accept Christ, when they accept what He did on the cross for them. Are you with me? So salvation comes by faith. And as you make and take that step of faith, you enter this realm of grace. So grace, listen, meets you when you step out in faith. Grace carries you when you choose to live by faith. And when Lazarus says to me, Pastor, I will go, he takes a step of faith to go to London, comes two other people. Never knew they were there. Two other people. Who are they? Grace. So is Pastor Kenneth just talking about church planting today? No. Talking about the Word of God? Spoken into your life? What are you going to do about it? Are you fearful? Are you scared? Are you unsure? Are you uncertain? Yeah, it all comes with the package. But listen, where faith arises, grace will follow. Faith. Take the word of God this year. What is God telling you? Could be a new business. God's grace. See, God doesn't work like an accountant. eh? Accountant wants everything mapped out. Wants everything in the bank first. Wants everything clear. And that's okay. Do it for your job because your boss needs that. Do it for your job. But what you do in the world that doesn't mean you take the world into the church and say, the rules I work in the world. It w- no, it doesn't. Because the world is natural. The church is supernatural. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Very important, friends. God doesn't always show us the whole plan. He shows us the first step. Take that. Grace follows. And grace may be just enough for one Sunday. That's fine, God, I'll take it. Grace may just be sufficient for, you know, I don't know, one week, one month. But please don't use it as an excuse. Like today, I'll go to you and say, hey, brother, can you please sing? I heard you're a good singer. I feel like I don't have the grace to... Pastor, your message really touched my heart because I don't have the grace to serve. What will be my answer to you? You haven't been listening. I said, faith first. I said, listen to the word of God first. 
I said, when you're listening and you go by faith, you go, yeah, I'm not comfortable, but I'll try it, Pastor. I'll try it. You try it and it doesn't work for you. Hallelujah. Find something else. But at least be faithful because you're part of this church. And if you're not part of this church yet uh, and you're still looking for a church, please, please consider. Because actually, we're quite a fun church to be with. Uh. We have family, we have cell group, uh. we, we have missions, we have... Oh, you know, okay, we, ha- we, have, we have all that you need here. Amen? Every time you talk about grace, you can't talk about it without faith. So would you live by faith and not by sight? Would you listen to the Word of God if He's saying to X church, go? You can't go, maybe you can give. You can't give that much, maybe you can pray. But maybe you can do all three. It, it's according to God's grace on your life. If God's grace is upon you to make money, make a lot of money and give it to the house, give it to the work of the Lord. If God's grace is for you to pastor, pastor well. Pastor in that grace. You do well, you'll prosper. When I travel, God's grace is upon me, giving me good health. I don't have jet lag the way I used to have it. These days, I can land in a country and go straight for a meeting. And it's not because I'm so healthy or because I'm on vitamins. It's because of God's grace. I thank God for a church that supports me and my wife. As I close, I want to remind you that the Bible says, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I most gladly boast in my infirmities, Paul the Apostle said, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. As I close, hear this sentence. Hear it well. There's a grace that says, All is done. There's no more work to do. Have you heard of that grace before? It's called the grace for salvation. Listen to it again. There's a grace that says, all is done and there is no more work. But listen to this one. And then there's still this grace. A grace that says, I will help you work. The other one says, no more work. This grace I'm talking about this morning says, I will help you work. Because there's still so much more to do. The other one says, there's nothing more to do. You're saved. And I believe that. Jesus had done it all. That's one kind of grace that we've been learning. No more work, nothing more to do. Then there's a grace today that says, I will give you strength to do my work and my will because there's still much to do. Embrace both grace. Both are biblical. One grace that says, He's done it all for you on the cross. Amen? No more work to do to get yourself saved. Really, seriously. You and I can't save ourselves. Only Jesus can save us. If you believe it, say amen. Amen. And then there is a grace that the Word of God says, be strong in the grace. The grace that has been given to each one according. According. God has given to each one of us a measure of grace. Work in it. Thank God for it. Thank God for it. If you're in college, there's a grace for you to be there. If you're in school, there's a grace for you. If you're at a workplace, there's a grace for you to be there. A grace. Step out in faith and you will see that grace. Step out in faith. Don't ever stop living by faith. Because when a person stops living by faith, they stop seeing the grace. But God's grace is sufficient and is sufficient for those who will recognize their weakness. Why are you weak? You're weak because you're stepping into something that you have no strength to do. You're stepping into something unfamiliar, stepping into something that you are not experienced, but God will carry you through by His grace. Would you live by faith? Would you step out in obedience to God's word? Come on, ex-church. Let's be a church that will make the difference in our community, in our country, in the nations before us. Let's keep obeying the word. Let's keep going, giving, praying, growing, doing the will of God. Let's not stop. Let's go by faith and let the grace of God meet us every time. Let the grace of God meet us each time we walk out by faith.